Hello everyone. Uh, so far we have looked at the authentication mechanisms where the user context is not preserved. Uh, so when we use the destinations like a basic authentication or OAuth2 password, uh, client credentials, uh, client certificate authentication, the logged in user's context is not preserved. Uh, but in this session, uh, we will look at authentication mechanisms where the user context is propagated to the end application as well. Uh, so we will be looking at the OAuth2 user token exchange and also the OAuth2 JWT bearer authentication mechanisms. Uh, so in the simplest sense, uh, so we have a front end application uh, and you have the end user, uh, the end user logs into the front end application and then accesses the back end application, which is the resource server uh, that protects some APIs. Uh, and then in order to access the back end application, uh, we pass in an access token. And what we want to do now is in this access token, we also want to have uh, the logged in users info so that the user context is propagated to the back end application, a uh, way you can do some authorization based on the logged in user. Uh, so this is the simplest uh, 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 workflow. And let's see how this can be accomplished. Uh, so here we have the end user. We have a SAP UI5 application uh, for the front end application, and uh, we have a cap application for the back end application. And then SAP BTP, uh, you are probably already aware of the XS UAA server, and uh, this one has a trusted connection to the identity provider. Uh, so to start off, the end user needs to be logged in to access the front end application. Uh, so the step one is to log in. Uh, using the XS UAA server, which delegates the authentication to the identity provider. Uh, and uh, here we can use a standalone app router, or we can use a managed app router. Uh, so uh, let's say we use a managed app router, and we do the login here. And uh, step two, what happens is the XS UAA server, it delegates the authentication to the identity provider, and we get a ID token or a user token. Um, and this ID token or user token has to be in the form of a, a JWT. Uh, this is uh, specified in the OpenID Connect. Uh, so this has the user profile information, like the name, the email, maybe a profile picture, or what have you. Uh, so this uh, identity provider gives you the user profile information. Now, this uh, end user now uh, can make a request to get authorized to the CAP application, so they need to get an access token. Uh, so they can send a request to the XS UAA server, uh, passing in the client credentials. We've seen this before, how to pass in the client credentials. But in addition to the client credentials, you also want to send the ID and the user token that you got from step one. Um, so this contains the user profile information. Uh, so you send all this to the XS UAA server, and in response, you get an access token Token, and this access token now uh, contains the logged in user info uh, and whereby you can do some authorization on the CAP application. Uh, so the first step is to get the user ID token, uh, the ID token or the, the user token, whatever you call it. And uh, you want to pass it along with the request to get the access token. And this is all handled automatically by the SAP BTP destination. So you really don't have to worry about how to get the ID token, how to pass the ID token, and on all that good stuff. Uh, all you have to do is uh, create the destination uh, with the user token exchange or the JWT bearer authentication mechanism. Uh, so your uh, destination will look something like this. Uh, the key thing is you want to choose uh, OAuth to user token exchange or the JWT bearer token. Uh, whichever authentication mechanism you want to use. Uh, and then you can pass in the client ID and the client secret. And by virtue of using the OAuth to user token exchange, uh, the user token or the ID token uh, that is sent along with the request and your access token that you receive uh, will now contain the uh, user, uh, the logged in user information. So let's have a quick look at uh, one of the example that I have. Uh, so if I go to my application, uh, right now I'm on branch uh, four. 
uh, so the user token exchange. And in this user token exchange, uh, you see that I have some kind of uh, requires authenticated user. Uh, so there is some authorization here as well. Uh, so only if I'm a destination manager, only if I have this role, uh, then I can see or do anything on this employee's entity. And the employee's entity itself uh, looks uh, something like this. Uh, so it has uh, just its email, name, email, and department. And there is some initial data, just one row here so nothing uh, fancy here and I've also created a UI application here uh, so this is a UI application and within the UI application all we are doing is uh, we are going to go ahead and display that uh, employees entity uh, now you need to be a member of that uh, destinations manager role uh, in order to see this uh, entity uh, so the user context the user uh, information needs to be propagated to the back end which is the cap application and let's see how we can do this uh, so in my mta.yaml file uh, I'm going to use the uh, managed app router uh, so in the managed app router um, the SAP uh, Launchpad service is going to be used uh, uh, in order to uh, for the managed app router. So everything is taken care of by SAP. Uh, all I have to do is uh, set up this mta.yaml file. And in my mta.yaml file, I've uh, created the OAuth user token exchange so that um, when the destination is created, it is created using OAuth to user token exchange. And the ID token or the user token uh, is uh, propagated uh, along with the request. And then your access token that you get uh, will have the logged in user information. So I've already deployed this app. Uh, so if I go into my SAP BTP cockpit, uh, you can see that there are a few destinations created and the destination is created with OAuth to user token exchange. And you can see that in addition to the client ID and the secret, uh, since we have a chosen uh, user token exchange, uh, the user ID uh, the, the ID token is also supplied along with the request. And then you get the access token, which has the uh, user uh, logged in user info. Uh, now we have authorization turned on. Uh, so if I go into my security for my users, I have assigned myself the I have assigned myself the uh, destinations manager role uh, so I should be able to see this application so I have the destinations manager role collection assigned to my, myself uh, so I should be able to access the application so if I go into my HTML5 application and if I let me go ahead and run it in incognito mode and I should be able to see the one row in the entity employees uh, now um, I also have the uh, uh, the log turned on. Let me go ahead and turn on the log SAP destinations SRV. And in my handler, uh, you can see that I also have uh, the console.log authorization. Uh, so I can see the JWT token and we can inspect the JWT token as well. Uh, so here, if I go in here and if I run, in, run my application in incognito mode, I should see at least one row, uh, one row, because I have one row as my initial data. So I should see one row that comes up here. Yeah, you can see Milton and so on. And in my uh, in my uh, log, I should also see the JWT token somewhere. So I can go ahead and copy this uh, JWT token, uh, inspect it uh, just to see all the authorization info that that, that is. Uh, 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 that is present in this uh, JWT token. And here you can see that I have uh, the subject, uh, all of the information that needs to be part of this uh, JWT token, all the authorization info that is part of this uh, uh, JWT token. And uh, this contains uh, the logged in user info as well. Uh, so this is how you would use the user token exchange. Now, if I wanted to use the JWT uh, bearer token, uh, that's uh, fairly simple as well. So let me go ahead and delete this. Uh, so instead of using the user token exchange, I can use the JWT bearer uh, authentication mechanism. It behaves uh, very similarly. Uh, the JWT bearer token, um, uh, as long as there is uh, a trust between your uh, 
access UAA and your identity provider. Uh, it can simplify some of the workflow. Uh, so if you have uh, the option of using the JWT bearer or the user token exchange, uh, then um, it's recommended to use the JWT bearer because it simplifies the workflow. Uh, but the concept remains the same, just the workflow is uh, slightly uh, simplified. There is uh, no round trip uh, in the JWT. There, is, there are no there is no two round trips in the JWT bearer. Uh, the access token is uh, directly retrieved from the uh, from the XSUA server. So let me go ahead and delete this guy. Uh, so now that if I delete this, uh, now because there is no destination, obviously this is not going to work. So if I try to log in here, I, I shouldn't be able to see anything. Let me close this actually. And if I try it now, uh, it should uh, there should be no rows uh, because I deleted the destination. Uh, and then what we'll do is, yeah, so there's no rows right here. So let's go ahead and recreate the destination using uh, the JWT bearer. So I've already exported that destination. Uh, so I'm going to import this uh, destination back in again. Uh, but at this time I'm going to select uh, the OAuth2 JWT bearer. Uh, I also need to provide the client secret. Uh, so let me go ahead and provide the client secret. And uh, let me go ahead and save it. And now that I have saved it, uh, so if I go ahead and run this application now, uh, I should be able to get one row, uh, which is going to be the, yeah, the row, same thing, row here. Uh, so now we are using the JWT uh, bearer authentication mechanism. Uh, like I said, it behaves uh, very similar to the user token exchange, um, except that this minimizes uh, some of the round trip in the workflow. Okay, thanks for watching this video.